All right, so we're talking about inverses of one-to-one -one functions, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit. Okay, so finding inverses graphically. It says if a, b, a point a, b is on the graph of f of x of your function, then b, comma a is on the graph of its inverse, f of negative 1 of x. Okay, so just notice what happened. My x and my y flipped places. That's what's happening here graphically. So easy way to show you this is just give me give you a table of x y values and let's just do one two three all right now what happens here if I put in a one into this equation one goes into 2x and that becomes a 2 2 times 2 is 4 3 times 2 is 6 okay now the question is are these inverses well how do I know they would be inverses if I can just flip the x's and the y and it's still a true statement. So over here, my x's will be what were my y's over here. So if I put in a 2, a 4, and a 6, let's just see if my y values come out to be what my original x's were. If that's true, then these guys are inverses. So let's just see. 1 half of 2 is 1. 4 times 1 half is 2. 6 times 1 half is 3. So you notice in our two tables, x and y have flipped places. So yes, these are inverses. Now, what I want you to know that is this. On my graph, graphically what's happening here, if x is 2, um, let's just grab this really quick. Like This is going to be a steep, steep little climb here, OK? This one, if I graph it, is going to be a little bit flatter. Now, my, my drawings are not great, but what you should see is that this is a steep slope of 2, and this has a slope of 1 half. And really what's happening with inverses is they are basically folded along the y equals x line. Let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to show you. If the y equals x line does this, if I took this curve and I folded it across there, it would look like this. And if my y equals x line is here, and I took this curve and I folded it this way, it should look like my original equation. So graphically, they're folding along the y equals x line. That's what's happening visually. On a table, you're going to see the x and the y's flip places. So make sure you kind of get that, all right? So in your book, you're going to be looking at graphs. And could you fold them along this y equals x line? And would they be inverses? That's what you're looking at. And you're looking at table values as well. All right, one-to-one -one functions. Um, a, cons a function is considered one-to-one -one if it has an inverse. So how do you know? Well, <clears throat> a function has an inverse function if and only if. This is not a typo, guys. If and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. So for instance, if I have a, gr a line like this, it's a function. If I put a horizontal line through it, it only hits in one place. This means it has an inverse function. It exists. Okay. A parabola, however, that's a function as it is, but if I put a horizontal line, it's going to hit in two places. So an inverse function does not does not exist, okay? It does not exist. An inverse exists, but it is not a function, and that's a difference you don't need to worry about. Right now, I just want you to look at the horizontal line test. Does it pass or does it fail? If it passes, it's considered one-to-one. -one. If it fails, it is not. So look at these. Do these functions have an inverse, or are they one-to-one? -one? Those are interchangeable, okay? Horizontal line test, look. It's going to hit two places, so this one is not one-to-one. -one. Look at this cubic guy. If I put a horizontal line through, it only hits in one place. So will it have an inverse function? Sure will. It sure will. Okay, okay so now we need to verify inverses. So to prove two inverses or functions or inverses of one another, we use compositions. We do f of g of x and g of f of x. And when you do that, you should end up with x equals x. 
And the reason this is, is remember we talked earlier about the graph. We graph a line, one inverse here and one inverse here. And we say it's a reflection along this line of symmetry. And that line of symmetry, if you remember your parent functions, is y equals x. This is why they have to equal x, all right? If they both equal x, then they are inverses. So let's look at this. f of g of x, all right? So I put g of x into the equation, x minus 3 plus 3, and then I solve it. x minus 3 plus 3, those simplify to nothing, and that's x. So that one's good to go. What about g of f of x? I put in f, which is x plus 3, minus 3. Drop the parentheses because they're not necessary. That's 0, so I end up with x. So since both of them equal x, they are inverses of one another. Let's try another example. All right, f of g of x. All right, so here's f. I need 2 times all of g of x x plus 5 over 2 minus 5. Now anytime you have a whole number multiplied by a fraction, to put that whole number over 1 so that you remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. Now one thing to notice in this situation is that you have a 2 on top and a 2 on the bottom, which means they will cancel each other out. And what's left is x plus 5 minus 5. Well that's 0, so I'm left with x. That composition works. So g of f of x <clears throat> in place of x, I'm going to put 2x minus 5 plus 5, all of that over 2. Drop the parentheses. Those cancel out, and I'm left with 2x over 2. So the 2's cancel one another out, and so I'm left with x on this guy. So keep in mind, they just have to equal x. They both have to equal x. Not one composition one composition can equal x and the other one might not, but both of them have to equal x for them to be inverses. Okay, I hope that's clear. On your own, I want you to, to find out, are these two functions inverses of one another? I've shown you several ways to prove it, so be prepared to defend your answer.